we're going to start with a sheet of watercolor paper, a black marker, and this handout. Make sure you download the handout by clicking the link in the description. We're going to draw four trees. And you want to start at the very bottom of the paper, maybe about a finger's width from the bottom, and draw a little tiny line, and then draw a line all the way to the top, but make it pretty skinny. And as you get towards the bottom, make it a little thicker. Then go ahead and color it in. Now let's go and do our uh, three other trunks. So I'm going to make a short trunk right here. I'm going to draw a pretty tall line to the top and you can do this any way that you want. Then I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker on the bottom. Not too much. My goal is to have thick and thin lines so you can create your trees however you want. You can even make some that are kind of curvy. I don't think I'll color in this one. I'm going to make some little texture marks to indicate a tree trunk and tree bark. Okay, so now the fun part. I like to turn my paper around because my hand has a natural tendency to draw an arc this way. I'm going to put my marker down and then sweep it up. Now you can do any types of lines that you want. This is more of a realistic looking tree. Well, you can have more whimsical trees like the next one. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to make some loops go all the way to the bottom. You want to have your heel of your hand resting lightly on the paper so that you can freely go back and forth. This is a really kind of a fun tree. I'm going to make these curved lines, but they're going to have knobs on the end. Now you don't have to do that. Maybe they have squares or arrows or different open circles. Whatever you want to do, you can make the branches as whimsical or as realistic as you like. For my final tree, I think I'm going to do some straight lines just like I did in this example here. I'm going to start at the top and just make these lines go perpendicular to the tree. It really helps sometimes to move your paper around. Okay, here are my four trees. Now I'm all set to add some watercolor paint. I have my watercolors in a little condiment cup and you can cover them over with a lid. And then I, I set them in this plastic palette. And that's a, a really good idea so that children don't tip over the paints. Now, you wanna take a fairly big brush, dip it in a color, and then just paint over the entire surface of the design. And then go back and forth. Now I'm gonna change my color. I'm gonna go for a red. Do the outside first, and then fill it in second. This is going to be skinnier. Now be careful, if you do touch the two watercolors, what's going to happen is that they're going to blend together and they'll create a new color. Can you see the two colors blending together? You may, may not want that. And if that's the case, you can fix it. Here's a tip. Take a dry brush and then just scoop it over the area that you want to remove and let that dry. And then when it's all dry, you can paint over it again. Okay, now I'm gonna paint one more color, my prickly porcupine tree. Okay, and then I'm all done. Quick and easy, but isn't that pretty? Now, I wanna show you another option. You can paint your watercolor blobs first. If that's the case, let this dry completely and then come back in and take your Sharpie marker and do the very same thing, except this time you're going over the watercolor blob. If you wanna see more watercolor techniques, I made a video just last week about four really simple watercolor techniques that every student should know. So go ahead and check out that video the link is in the description below.